today on Divorce Court. John Tavis, I'm here to tell you today that I'm not here to be your mother. I'm not here to raise you. I'm here to be your wife and your partner. When Justine goes to her father over me for finances, it makes me feel less than a man. I always come to my daddy before I come to him with anything. I feel like I'm the head of the household when she wants me to be the head of the household. I am older than him, and I have more experience in life than him. I tend to take over. I can't be with her in five years if she continues this, this behavior. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Justine Patterson and Dontavious Patterson. The two of you have been together for five years and married for five years. You uh, don't have any children together. Your marriage is in trouble, so you've come to me for advice. Mrs. Patterson, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me what is happening uh, in your household? Well, I just want to start off by saying, um, Dontavious and I, we've been together uh, for three. Well, we've been married for five years. But we got married after just knowing each other three weeks. And what happened in those three weeks? Well, Yana, he swept me off my feet. Um, I met him at a pizza joint, and when I seen him, oh, Dios mío, él estaba... He was fine. I loved everything about him. He was tall, he was handsome, you know, he had a kind soul. I loved everything about him. Mr. Patterson, what did you see in her in three weeks that made you say, I do? Oh, uh, well, you know, there's an age difference, about six to seven year age difference. So, you know, um, she kind of put that, that old school thing on my oh, fellow Lord. She whipped it on you, yeah. yeah. You got to put the food and everything. I ain't been the same since. Uh-huh, I got it, I got it. Okay, Miss Patterson, bring me up to speed. Okay, Your Honor. Let me just tell you a little bit about, I'm not from here. My, I'm originally from Panama. Mm -hmm. And um, Spanish is my first language. I learned English about 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, I met Don Tavis. We I fell heads over heels for him. I have two children. Um, he was great with them. Um, I do. I have a, a boy and a girl. And pretty much, like I said, we fell in love with him. And it just started going downhill once, you know, we've been together, like I said, five years. Right. And then the age difference. Just, He's bothersome. It just... So he was 20 when you married him. He was 19 when I married him. He was him. 19 when you married him. He was 19 him. and I was 26. He was 26. <laughs> Mr. Patterson, what do you think the problem is? Me, personally, my only problem with my wife is, you know, um, she's too dependent on her father. I don't really have a chance to, you know, do what I want to do for her. I like to surprise her a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been several different occasions in which I've tried to surprise her. And, and, you know, um, she'll think I've forgotten about a holiday or something. And one year, um, I, I spent two, three months on saving money on putting down payments on the, on the necklace for her. And down to my last payment, her dad turned around and bought the necklace in one day. You know what I'm saying? And, um... Y'all never... Hang on, hang on. Let the, ooh. <laughs> Already. Does her father have a lot of money and is able to bigfooted? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's a big dog and everything. You know what I'm saying? That's Every not situation. The case, Your Honor. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and he loved me. He got a lot of respect for me. I got a lot of respect for him. But you know, when it comes to her, anytime she opens her mouth, he there for her. He, he gives that, her whatever she wants. I, and doesn't I allow salute you to that. Do. But I like to be there for my wife too. You know what I'm saying? And I like to be there first. And I like to be. I just want to be that backbone. You know what I'm saying? Mrs. Patterson, your thoughts on that? Let me just say about the whole necklace thing. Judge, I'm not from here. Like I said it before, I'm from Panama. My first language is Spanish. So my culture is totally different from the culture here. We, I'm, I'm close to my parents, especially my dad. Mm -hmm. Like, where I come from, we don't believe that the moment you turn 18, you're kicked out or mm -hmm. you're just grown or you're on your right. own or you have to figure it out on your own. That doesn't... I wasn't raised that way. Mm -hmm. My dad, and as far as, like, the jewelry, it was a necklace that I wanted from my country. I didn't tell my dad. Just like I told him, I'm like, oh, my God, there's this lady who's from my country. We have this yearly event. She was bringing um, different designs, and I told my dad about it. Well, we didn't know that he was going to so get it. So it just happenstance. It's I just, mean, he wasn't trying to outdo it, you. He wasn't. He just happened to get there first. See, it's That's not that all. he's ever trying to outdo me. But he, he always he, does. He, he always does, though. And it, she got to be giving him some type of call. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, it's been several cases. I tried to surprise her for her birthday. I act like I've forgotten about her all the way up to the last minute. And, you know, 
some kind of way she'll back though me and call him and psh, he make everything him, you know what I'm saying? And and I already have yeah, some. Your plan. culture notwithstanding, do you understand your husband has to feel like he's he's I feel like you know, I'm not like needed. Your dude and that you that that, exactly. that he does for you and that's your obligation to make him feel that way? And it is, and I'm working on that. And that's the problem that we're having. But he just want me to cut, like, I don't know what he... Not to mention, she's the only woman I've ever done anything for, ever even thought to do anything for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I just felt that should be special. And I'm not saying that he doesn't do for me and my children, because he doesn't have any children, and he's 100% dedicated to my daughter. I'll, say, I'll give an example to... My daughter just got her progress report on what? last Friday. Mm -hmm. My daughter had all A's, one B, and thanks to him, because he truly, he's dedicated to her. His education mm -hmm. is, her education is everything to him. He's dedicated every day. <laughs> but, he is, he, he's, he's 100%. So what did he do? What did he do? Good. Finish the but story. But the problem here is, he, I don't want him to feel like he's not a man, it's just that my dad has always been there. And it's not that, that he's not man enough or he's not important in my life. He is. But my dad has always been there. Yeah. So what but, I'm but, trying but see, to do... Here's the thing. When you get married, you make decisions about how you're going to behave. And you have yeah. to behave in a manner that's okay with your man. And you handle the and you, situation. And you have, to, you have to handle things differently. Mm -hmm. And it might mean... I have to break a habit here or there in order to accommodate who we are. I'm trying, but see, when I try to communicate... Ain't no try, there's either do or not do. Don't. Pick up the phone or don't pick up the phone. If you're grown enough to get married, you just do. One of his good friends is like a brother to him. He just mm -hmm. found out that he's having another child. This is his third child. Mm -hmm. And so there's times in this relationship, lately I'm starting to feel like he's a bit resentful. My understanding is on that note that you do want to have, start to have a family. I definitely want to have a family. And she's not ready. Mrs. Patterson, you say that you became a mother very young and that, you believe, has impacted a great deal how you conduct your life now. Why don't you tell me the story of what happened and how you believe it's still present today in your life? Well, um, I came to this country when I was 14 years old. Um, I'm actually the first one in my family to have a baby out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. um, my parents had been married for 39 years. I had my son when I was 17. And even though I had him at 17, um, I had a lot of support. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of support with his family, my family. But it devastated my parents. I just put my whole family in a whole different era. And they just had to go, you know, flow with it. Mm -hmm. when we first got here. So my family means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Dontavis grew up in a household where he didn't have both of his parents. Mm -hmm. He only had his mother. And so when he seen the relationship that my... Hey, hang, hang on, hang on. Let, let, let's, let's let Mr. Patterson speak for himself. Mr. Patterson, when you stepped into the role as at stepfather at 19, which is very, very deep, were you concerned about it? Was it difficult for you? And how do you think you've done? Oh, I think I've been doing a great job. It's not difficult. The only difficult part is, is when, um, when you start to feel like you're not being appreciated for it. You know what I'm saying? But what other, makes you think you're not appreciated for it? You know, um, I mean, I, I think that just comes with being a step-parent, period. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, um, you can spend all the time in the world and do everything that you could possibly do. But then, you know, when that little kid pick up that phone and call the real pops, you know, it, it kind of mm -hmm. make you feel some kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess that's just the reality of it, but I'm growing into it, mm -hmm. you know? And, um... Were you at all hesitant to take on a woman who had two children? You were just 19. Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Um, my stepfather raised me, you know? Um, so I, I, I never looked at them no different than my real children because I wasn't looked at any different. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't treat I, them like... And not that, that they're different because they're stepchildren. And I appreciate that, I do. But you were so young to take on that responsibility. That did not frighten you at all? Oh, nah, not at all. You know, I've always been, like, uh, a little ahead of myself uh, mentally. You, you know what I'm saying? More mature. Yeah, a lot more mature, you know, so... Um, all the clubbing and playing around. You know, I kind of skipped that in my 20s anyway. Yeah. You know, I don't, so my sure. understanding is, on that note, that you do want to have, start to have a family with I her I definitely now. want and to have a family. And she's not ready. 
Well, you know, we attempted to once right. before her body um, wasn't ready for a child. Right. Um, therefore, um, we really haven't worked on it again. But he's right talked now. about it. He's talked about how he's disappointed because his, one of his good friends is like a brother to him. He just mm -hmm. found out that he's having another child. This is his third child. Mm -hmm. And so there's times in this relationship, lately I'm starting to feel like he's a bit resentful. Mm -hmm. So the me. fact that you don't have a and baby the fact together. Because he keeps saying little things like, you know, I'm 25, I don't have any children, I must not be getting up, good enough, and everyone around him is having children. But what I don't want to do is bring another human being to this world and we're having little minor... We, we don't have see, it totally together. We don't have it all together. It, it wouldn't be I fair to like the child. I feel like we're never going to be totally just perfect, you know what I'm saying? With the kid or without the kid, you know what I'm saying? We've been struggling five years together. I don't, I don't feel like a kid gonna, you know what I'm saying, do no justice or do no worse. But to we the gotta situation. work on the communication. And I'm gonna get to that communication issue and why it is such an issue. I'm like a jack rabbit right now and I be wanting it. Yeah. I be wanting it when I want it. And you know, she'll give it to me when she feel like getting it to me, when she feel like getting but it to me. But then respect like... the fact that you have a higher drive and a need at this juncture in your life. He's wanting it three, four times a day. I, who has the time? How would you feel if your spouse's parents gave them financial support? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Mr. Patterson, you said you grew up in a hood culture where the women run over the men. Correct. And you don't want that happening to you. Why don't you tell me what you saw as a child and what you're, you're trying to stay away from? Well, my mother is a very, very, very dominant woman. And my, my stepfather is a very stand-up, phenomenal guy. Therefore, he lets her have her way with almost anything. But from my point of view, I, I really can't just let my wife have her way with everything because I'm I'm built a little different and I like right. to speak my mind and, and stand on what I believe in. You know, and sometimes she she and her tone the tone of her voice is not even what she says. Sometimes it's just the tone of her voice when she talks to me as if I'm her child. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't interpret it the right way. But right. eso no es siempre así. Eso no es siempre así. Listen, it's just the fact that. He's always comparing this relationship to... He's always comparing me to his mother. I am not his mother, and he is not his stepfather. The kind of issues that we have, he's always incorporating... Well, what do you think your communication problems are? What do you think the I'm issue is? I'm just loud. Is I'm, I'm loud. Wrong, That's it. You know, I mean what I say, and I say what I mean, and, I, and it's just that. It's nothing more, nothing less. And so for him... So you think the entirety of the communication problem is he's misinterpreting your cultural, That's... your cultural expression as anger or dominance, right? Or controlling. Or controlling. That's and that's not even that's the exactly game. That's how I'm taking it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. yeah. Like right now, you know what I'm saying? Right. And still the saying, well, let me try it a different way. She's just like, well, this me, and then yeah. what they gonna be? You, now, let you let know me say what something saying? to you, Mrs. Patterson. This is me is never an appropriate response to a problem. This is me. Now, not if you want to stay married. If you want to be single, you can this is me all day long if you want to. But no, when you're married, you can't this is me. Now, who says you're having intimacy issues? Mm -hmm. I'm 25 years old right now. You know what I'm saying? She 31. My sex drive, like a jack rabbit right now, and I be wanting it. Yeah. I be wanting it when I want it. And, you know, she'll give it to me when she feel like getting it to me, when she feel like getting it but to me. But then respect like... the fact that you have a higher drive and a need at this juncture in your life. Mrs. Could... Patterson, your response to that would be... Well, I'm not saying that I don't want to have sex. I said, let's schedule. <laughs> not even... And here's why. I have a busy... Not even schedule. But, like, if we could get together and we could figure out, like, okay, on these days, because not only do I have to take care of the children, I still have a full schedule. Like, I'm a paralegal and I work with different doctors. I have a lot going on. And so, yeah, while he's thinking about that, my mind is on somebody is on, on something totally different. Not somebody, but something else. So, like, I'm not saying that I don't want to and my sex drive is not as high as his, but we have other things more important than... Being a paralegal is keeping you from having sex. No. <laughs> Taking care of my children as, me as much as he wants it, Your Honor. He's looking at... He's wanting it three, four times a day. I, who has the time? Mm -hmm. More, it's more so of, okay, um, 
She may want it early in the morning. I might want, I want it all the time. But if she, if she turn me down three, four times, and then she come at me all, you know, wanting right. it, I'm gonna turn her down. Then that just starts a little thing when, when both of us are like, back nah. And forth. Who's just, gonna be the one that yeah. you have, you have their yeah. needs met on it's, their schedule? Exactly. And you get, your egos get involved. And, and every and time I'm selling. turning her down, I'm really wanting it, but I have to turn her down. <laughs> just, just to let her know, you know what I'm saying? That's not how to handle it. It isn't, but I'm gonna try to address something or other. I don't think I'm gonna get very far, but I'm gonna do it anyway. What would be an unreasonable request for sex from your partner? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. There's one thing I could give, get him to give you that, that would make this better for you. What would it be, Mrs. Patrick? Just one. Communication. Communication. Mm -hmm. You don't feel you communicate well with him or you feel he's not receptive to what you have to say? You feel you're not heard? In I've... what manner do you need help? Well, I say both, both ways. I feel like I'm not heard and he feels like he's not heard or he's not needed. And basically, if we can get our communication down pat, I think we'll be okay. Okay, Mr. Patterson, if there was one thing I could get her to give you, what would it be? No goodies. I just want, want it when I want it. That's all, because I'm a good man to her. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I ain't nothing but 25 years old. Right. And I be holding her down. You, and I feel like I be holding her oh, down. Oh, you do? You know what I'm saying? So no I question feel about like it. the little thing that I do ask for, let me get that when I want that. You know what I'm saying? I'm loyal. Well, I'm you know what I'm saying? you something. <laughs> you found some young thing that you liked and you wrapped him up. And this is who he is. He has come across as strong, as trustworthy, as faithful, as capable, as all man, and you need to let the brother have some more sex. Mm. Because it can't be about... <laughs> He's 25. You know what I'm saying? He's 25. And that's what that is. And it can't be just about when you want it. It's like, you know, this brother, woo! And it's that kind of time in his life. And when you get somebody young or get somebody older, you have to take that into account in how you deal with them. You're gonna fool around and lose them. And it's not like it's gonna, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you just have to be, you know, they're nothing about being a paralegal to keep you from having sex. I don't know what that is in either. Because I wasn't a para, I was illegal. Doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a practical thing. It's a practical matter that you have to take care of that. And the first part of communication is the ability to listen. I don't think you're good with that. That's true. And I think that if you want to have better communication, you have to start with better hearing mm. and better listening. And if you can't do that, you're never going to get anywhere. And I'm talking to you uh, because I think Mr. Patterson is showing up grown and mature and on point, and you're the one who's a little weak, and I think you need to step up your game. Period. End of story. <laughs> Thank you for being the man that you are. Thank Make you sure you're good, worthy so. of him. This matter is adjourned. I feel like if he was able to communicate a little bit more effectively with me, with telling me exactly what's wrong with him instead of having me figure it out, or um, the whole sexual thing, we us talking about it, I think that that will help too. I just hope we can move forward from here and, um, and we do not have to move forward with a divorce.